Hi everyone, welcome to the summer 2014 edition of ED 744 Curriculum Development and Instruction. I wanted to make this video to show you some of the D2L features that we will be using throughout the eight weeks that we will be working together. First off, we have our home page. If I have any news, I will post it down here, which as you can see, I have the video that I'm creating here that says, please watch me first. So check to see if there's anything there. Also, over here where it says getting started, you'll see a link to the video, a link to my information, also, the technical requirements necessary for the course and also the netiquette um, expectations for your participation and behavior in this graduate course. Also, if you go to the assessments, the areas that I use the most are going to be the checklist. So if you ever are wondering what needs to be done, Go to the checklist. Um, I don't have this in the syllabus. I this I go off the checklist always. So anyway, for the most part, for week one, you can see that you need to give your introduction, and then I had posted eight questions in the content area. You are to respond to those eight questions, and then after you've read all of the class members discussion postings, you are to write a response uh, based on your overall impression of the group. And then you can see week two and so on. And the thing that's nice, I'm in student view right now, but it's called a checklist. So that way, say you've done your introduction, then you can go ahead and check it off and save it. And so you'll notice when that um, has taken place, it says when it's completed and so on and you won't have so many items that are left to be completed. So anyway, please use the checklist to stay on top of your assignments. Also, I use the self-assess, no, excuse me, the um, rubrics, but I don't have very many because of the fact that the main rubric that you will be working on, you will develop in your groups. But I do have one for this first assignment, the building the com learning community scoring rubric. So if you go up to rubrics and go over here to this arrow and hit the down arrow button, you can go to preview and you can see the criteria that you're going to be scored upon. And it's pretty much another checklist. You did it or you didn't. So yes or no. But anyway, just so that you know that that's what I look for when I do give you an assessed grade. Also, even though there's a couple more drop boxes that need to go up there, um, the drop boxes where you will submit your um, final concept-based unit that you'll be developing, and then also I need to have a drop box up there for the small groups for your um, concept-based unit rubric that you'll be developing together too. So, but anyway, just wanted to show you that place. And then, of course, what all students are concerned about, but me as a professor am not that <laughs> concerned about, are the grades. As long as you follow the checklist and do your assignments, there's no reason why you should not leave this class with a high grade. However, I do not necessarily post grades every single week as they're, as we're going on. It just depends on how busy I am with my other classes and my other professional responsibilities as well. So just police yourself. If you're doing your work, don't worry about your grade. You'll be fine. And I do know the importance of giving feedback. I have a tendency of giving feedback more than I do necessarily putting up that number that some people are kind of concerned about. So just remember that if you're doing your work, you're going to be fine. Also, the content area. This is where you'll find the meat of the material. So here for Module 1, our Building the Learning Community, I've also tried to put the weeks 
in the header so that you know this is the information that goes for week one. And except for this class, don't ask me why, but I called a module. Sometimes I call them module one, week one, but they're the same idea. But you'll see that there's an introduction and which talks about what we'll be learning. And then also module one will give you the actual assignment. And I've put these into HTML, so they don't look as nice as what I used to see them in PDF form, but I was told now to switch everything back to HTML instead of PDF. So you can see right there, I've got some misaligned information, but one of these days it will get corrected. But anyway... There is the information. Those are the eight questions that you'll be answering. And where you'll put that information is in the discussion area. Up here, I have this called, it's called Ask Dr. Stone a Question, but really it's Ask a Question. You don't necessarily have to wait for a response from me. If you know the answer to the question, please post it. We're a learning community and I want you to learn from each other just as much as you learn from me and as I will learn from you. So we're all in this together. Well, that pretty much covers it all. If you have any questions, please post them right there. And Mod this week one, you'll see that we're all in, all 19 of us, I believe that's how many is in the class, are going to post their um, responses here. But then after that, you'll be divided into smaller groups. So, and they'll be randomly selected. But I try to put the names on them just so that you know who else is in your group. But they will not be the same group every single week. You might see some of the same people, but not the exact same people. And then when we get down to developing your concept-based unit, you will um, be put in groups according to content area and grade level, just so that you can work together that way. So thanks, everybody. I look forward to reading your responses to the eight questions and what you think the learning community has in common. And I look forward to working with you this entire eight weeks, next upcoming eight weeks. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week.